while other people come, I can give some brief, yeah, brief introduction. Now, we have talked about polypropylene, we have talked about other polymers in which, okay, like PVA and yesterday in one of the tutorials, I talked about polyethylene, okay, because polyethylene is a very useful polymer. Polyethylene has high ductility, low density, low cost, all right, and you can have various types of polyethylene, so that you can have different types of crystallinity and and if you have low crystalline polyethylene, then you can have more ductility, medium, you get medium ductility and better strength. So, that gives a wide range of properties. So, today's this lecture is where we had used fly ash in polyethylene also. Now, in, in, interestingly, this polyethylene was a recycled polyethylene. So, a company who actually uses a lot of material, plastic material, they collect these used components from motor cars and things like that. When a, if motor cars are recycled, so a lot of plastics things also are there. So, rather than throwing them into the bin, they can also be recycled. And then, this company in Sydney, the director of that company came to know about us and one day came to us and the di director of the company said, can we use recycled polyethylene with your fly ash? I said, yes, that will be very good because polyethylene is a used polymer. But then he said, but the recycled polyethylene does not have white color, it has quite close to dark green and black. Then I said, it does not matter if you get normal fly ash, that is also quite close to dark green or black, so they will be very friendly to each other. So, that is where this Mr. Don Ralph, he was the Australian guy who was owner of the owner of the company. I think subsequently they have, the company has changed hands, okay, they have sold it. Imran Akabir was the student who did most of the work. Atma Zeni was an, my another PhD research scholar whose work we presented yesterday and also whose, whose work, part of the extension of his work I will present in the second lecture today. And Amar Mada, my country D Mada, is from Andhra Pradesh and he did his PhD with me in the area of nanocomposites. So, when he did nanocomposites, he is originally a metallurgist and when he did nanocomposites, he generated lot of information about FTIR and all these other techniques, Ramon and he is a very well known person now in those areas. And whenever I have other students, PhD students and things, he works in Sydney different places, so I request him to come at times and help the so he can come maybe, but not more than once a month. So he was also involved. And that way, this work was presented as an invited paper in Cement Australia Brisbane acknowledgement, and it was presented at a Composites Australia conference in Blue Mountains, which is near Sydney. New South Wales, 14 to 16 March 2012, and it, it gave, they gave me about 45 minutes time to present this work. And there was people from all different parts of, of composition, all different parts of the world, and it was an interesting one. And here, you will see the flash field polymer, HDP, high density polyethylene and mechanical and electrical study. So, so far when we have gone through all these lectures and people have done characterization of like 
mechanical property, fracture property, impact property, and then bonding property, FTIR, and also lots of other things. But as I mentioned, flash can also improve the electrical properties in polymers and plastics. Can you tell me what component of fly ash can improve the electrical property? Yes? LOI, thank you very much. Because LOI has the residual carbon there, whereas all the all the ceramic components, all the ceramic components they have ceramics. So if you have LOI, now if you have, there are two ways of using, getting better electrical properties. One is if you have higher LOI, you can do that. But if you have higher LOI, that can also cause other problems. So the, what we did, we put the lower, standard lower LOI, but then we made different composites with more percentage of fly ash. So that way, the ceramic or cementious properties of the fly ash does not change is the same, but if you have more and more things, the polymer or the things, they see more and more carbon. All right? So that's how. So that was a common sense which you, which we used rather than hello, going for high LOI flyers because high LOI can have other difficulties, cause other difficult other problems. Okay, for those of you who just popped in in the last five minutes, this today's lecture is about using fly ash in high density polyethylene and it, and it's not it's not new high density polyethylene it's recycled high density polyethylene from motor car bodies and things like that and that fortunately has the same color as the normal fly ash which is dark green or things like that and this work was done when a company a manufacturing and or collect, collecting of this recycled polyethylene when they approached and we said yes, we will put fly ash. Okay, so we are going to the second slide of this talk, fly ash field polymer HDP, mechanical and electrical study. Now, what we did, we used up to 20 percent as received fly ash, gray black in color. In this, I sit down for a while, I have to walk a long way. Gray black in color, the one which you have seen, and also similar to that what Professor Kamalkar showed you. And in recycled cheap polymer high density polyethylene. And that means what happens, this is now recycled. So rather than throwing away in the rubbish bin or or in the soil or things like that, people can just break it down and people can also sell it. Okay, so it's a like fly ash is a recycling material. This is recycled polyethylene, so they can they become friends to each other. A, you are recycled and I am recycled. So if we are together, re re recycled, re re recycled. So that's that's how they go. All right. So we used a fly ash. Given by those Australian companies, Cement Australia, Brisbane, and this is the particle size distribution of the fly ash. The particle size in this range, you have a small fraction below one micron, and you have up to about say 90 micron. You have the size distribution, particle size distribution. The Experiments involved, including the you have to do individual characterization and also then the mixing of the fly ash. So the experiments used X-ray fluorescence, scanning electron microscopy, X-ray diffraction, and Raman spectroscopy. Now, in the past lectures, we have not mentioned much about Raman. We may have just highlighted just briefly, but Raman spectroscopy also gives another another kind of bonding. You, it, you can see that Raman spectroscopy can give bonding. Remember? Huh? 
Okay, yes. Okay. And the mechanical testing was done. So that will depend on the type of the recycled polyethylene and also the fly ash and also the bonding. So the mechanical tests done were tensile impact and the tensile impact and micro hardness. Now when you have done tensile test of polypropylene and then fly ash you have seen that the tensile tank strength goes down. So let's have a look at how the polyethylene is affected, okay? Or when you put polyethylene impact in the case of polypropylene we saw that impact went up with the fly ash content. So that was a good thing. And the micro hardness also in one of the studies we showed how to carry out micro hardness and what micro hardness does whereas normal so if you are a metallurgist or ceramics you, you use vicus and all other types of hardness which gives a bulk hardness of the material it uses a fair amount of high load what is the load used in vicus or, or One thousand? What? One kilogram. So one thousand kilogram. Yes. Something like that. And if you have the spherical one, what is that called? No. That's a Brinell one, spherical, spherical. And again, wh what type of load do you want? You, you apply quite heavy load. And the difference between Brinell and Vicas is that when you are applying Brinell, the surface area is much large. But in Vika, the surface area of the diamond indenter is much sharp. But still, you are looking at pretty high load. Whereas micro hardness, what, what it does, micro hardness says that look, when you have a material or ceramic or just things included, it's not always that the load is very high. But even if you have pretty low load, it might create some initial void or something like that or cracking, micro cracking. So micro hardness is very good from the point of view of fracture property and micro cracking and materials toughness in the microscopic point of view. Yeah, of the surface or if you if you wish you can cut sections and you can go down there because the depth of field is very low. So whatever you have, you can look at surface or you can cut in different surfaces different and different parts or you can take at different points. So it gives you the chance of looking at the micro hardness over a large area of the surface or the depth of the material. Now the results showed that the, in the fly ash, is silica and alumina and so obviously it is type F type fly ash. There is no calcium, all right, F type fly ash. And the extra digraphs, now these are for polyethylene now. You made the composites. This is zero percent fly ash. And it's a very difficult. The two theta is about 22 degree, 22.5 or 21.5 degree. That is the standard two theta for polyethylene. Okay, low density polyethylene. No, this is a high density polyethylene. And then when you put more fly ash, you will find that the peak. The, intensity is going down. That means the fly ash is occupying some of these things. So there is the entire area is not covered by the poly, polyethylene. So that's why the peak intensity is going going down. So as I said for those of you who have come over the past five minutes, yesterday we covered polyethylene, the commodity plastics and we covered the aspects of polyethylene, various aspects including density, things, extra diffraction and all those things. 
and we also saw that there is low density, linear, low density, medium density, high density. And in this one, in this lecture today, the material used, the uh, polymer material used is recycled polyethylene, which is taken from like car bodies and things inside the car, all these things that there are lots of polyethylene and they are broken down and they are mixed with fly ash. Okay? But when you look at the XRD, even though they are recycled, but this high density polyethylene without any fly ash still gives a good peak at about 22.5 degree. And when you keep on adding the fly ash, this is the 20 percent weight percent fly ash. So when you keep on adding the fly ash, then the peak comes down, but the material still has the same response so far as the angle is concerned. So, its intensity is going down because now the part of the polyethylene, polyethylene is occupied by fly ash. So, you are not having enough, all right, enough polyethylene there. Now, this is Raman counts. So, this is where Dr. Mike and Manda helped Imran Kavir. She was a student who was making all these composites and things like that. And then this gives a summary of the Raman peaks. With 0 percent fly ash in polyethylene, high density polyethylene. These are the peaks, this is the height of the peaks, these are the peaks. And as you keep on adding 2 percent, 5, 10 and 20 percent weight percent fly ash, the peak positions remain reasonably same, but it shift a little bit here and there, but the peaks starts, the intensity start coming down. So, again having worked with Professor Gaini Moran, who is the director of the, she is now the Professor of Chancellor Research for the past couple of years, but she was the director of the Marconet Analytical Center for about 8 to 10 years and it was good to have her as a part of the team. So, we use lots of, so here it shows that the peaks are similar, but for example, here, here the Raman shifts are high for the flash, but when you put, no, high, high for the uh, polymer, and when you put the flyers, the peak intensities go down. But these are the way you can identify if there is reaction and if there are new peaks. Now, if you take a look at the 14, 15, and 14, 40s peaks, if you go back to that, 14, 15, and 14, 40. They are somewhere here, somewhere here, all right. If you now take a look at those peaks, magnify it, then they start looking like that. So if you're not worried about all the peaks, but where you see this, all this small peaks, then you can see the this is the 14, 15 peaks, and this is the 14, 40. You see that. High density polyethylene has peaks like that slightly on the right hand side, and this is this is 14, this is 14, 15, and slightly right hand side of that, and the other peak is slightly left hand side of the 14, 40. Whereas the, with the fly ash, the peaks shift by very small units. All right, and this is something which is very similar to FTIR also, because when you have composites, the peaks are there, but they may move slightly this way, that way. That shows that they are happy. They said, all right. It's like <clears throat> if there are six chairs, so six people are there on a bench and two more people come in, two more means that's about 30 percent fly ash. So, six chairs are 100 percent polyethylene and two more people come in. Then, what you can do, not on the chairs, but if you have a bench, then the people of the six peaks, they move a bit this way, that way, 
and the, the fly, uh, these two other people, they come in. So, that is the kind of thing happens here. That's the, the way I look at it. So, there's shift a bit here and there. So that's why the peak intensity is shift by a few, a few units. All right? So, that means, yes, let's be friend. Let's just share our positions. If we have to shift a bit, that's fine. What is, what is wrong with it? But if, there's a, if the matrix said no, we throw it out, then the matrix will retain its own peak, so there is no shifting. So that is where I understand FTIR and Raman, because I'm a material scientist and mechanical engineer, and also a also a qualified cricket umpire from Melbourne Cricket Ground, and I've umpired for about 10 to 12 years in various grounds in around Melbourne. So I know that things can go a bit here and there. So it doesn't mean that every time a ball hits your body, you are LBW. There are lots of things, okay? So similarly, there are, so here you can see that when you have fly edge in it, the peaks here shifts a little bit this way. And when you have the peaks here, they shift a little bit on the left hand side. So naturally, when if you have six people, they have to some move a little bit on the right hand side, some move it on the left hand side, and that's how you include the other two new arrivals. So this is something which is worth using in your studies. Raman spectroscopy is quite good. And obviously it's, it was the discoverer was Sir C. V. Raman, the Nobel laureate, and a couple of years ago when I was in, no, a couple of years, last year when I was in Kolkata and I was invited to give a presentation on Raman spectroscopy of all these things. You know, do you believe what was the name of the hall in that ICS building? The name of the hall was Raman Theater. And I said, hang on, I've come to Raman Theater and presenting. I said, what a great opportunity. All right? So, I, I paid my regards to Sir C. V. Raman. I said, you are a great person. You developed all this technique, and that's what is now being so much valuable. Yes, you can come. What you, always, that's a very good question. You go to FTIR also. So combine, whenever you're doing Raman, it's always 100% times we do it with FTR. But because we have gone through FTR before, so we are not, but we might, there might be some things here. But yes, it, because then that will give you a confirmation. All right? Yes. But if you don't have FTR, go ahead with Raman, but there you can see that this is, this is friendship, that means they, when you have the composites, composites peak have shifted a bit here, right hand side, compared to the polyethylene, and in this case, it shifted towards the left hand side. Can you see that? So, that shows that it is accommodating the flyers, and that shows that, but if this, these peaks did not shift anything, perhaps these peaks, these, they would have been more flat. All right. So there are D and G, two types of two types of studies. G and D, or I said D and G, whatever it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this kind of t t testing is quite important. Yes, you can say that, but you have to go through the go through these things, and I may have to ask Dr. Mike and Madda for confirming that, because he knows much more, because he's a very clever boy, okay? Well, he's now married and things like that, his wife is also there, because he wanted to learn as much FTIR and Raman as he could from Professor Graini Moran. So he spent a lot of time in the mic. Mark one at an analytical center. All right, so he has he has given a lot of access to that. Okay.
Now the mechanical results, if you take a look at the, the these are not the tensile test strength diagrams, but if you look at the yield stress, yield stress, even if we put 28% flash, with, all right, it's, yield stress is almost constant. Sometimes it may go, goes up a little bit, 20 goes up to 22, and then comes down to 25, goes up like that. But it's almost a straight line, parallel. So, from this point of view, flash and high density polyethylene ethers from mechanical engineering point of view, people will be happy with that because the yield strength is at least the same as the high density polyethylene. All right? Now, here you see this yield necking point. Now, as I said, the recycled high density polyethylene had the same color, I mean, it had the similar dark color as you have seen here. And the fly ash is also gray, gray black. So, when you put them there, this is the type of the, this mixed fly ash containing the, those specimens. From left, this is new recycled high density polyethylene, please make a note. So, this is without the fly ash, and this is when you put 2 percent fly ash, 5 per, weight percent fly ash, 10 and 20. So, one thing what you can see that was the recycled yield strength are the same, and the ductility is quite all right. They are ductile, ductile, except when you go to about 20 percent weight percent fly ash, that yielding is a bit much less and you get more like a brittle failure. Okay? So, it, it can extend. So, that is what one has to. So, this is the yield and this is necking and then from the necking it is drawing, but when you go to the 20 percent fly ash, this necking and drawing is a bit less. So, this is plain stress and this is plain strain. So, this is, this, these four are plain stress and the fifth one is plain strain. Remember yesterday, yes? Did you, any question? Okay. Where is this lady gone? Okay. All right. Is she all right? Health is all right? Yes, she is. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. This, all these lectures have done made her sick. No, thank you. No, she is a nice colleague of yours and it is good to have, see everyone there. All right, but hope she will come back. Okay, good. All right. So, this is a, this shows fair amount of information. One, recycled high density polyethylene when you are using in all things like you put color there and mixture. So, if you are in a car and if you have this, all these bonnets and things like that and how do you know that there is plastics there? Do you get a feeling that there are plastics? I get a feeling when I close the door, when I close the door, all of a I get a mild electric shock. And we have a mild electric shock, that means it is not just metal, there is also non, non, non non-conducting materials. So that gives me an impression that there is some plastics there. Now, sometimes children do not like that. So, if you get electric shock, it is not good. But, some of the components, one has to look at it. So, sometimes it better, if you become an engineer in the automotive industry, try to give a fine paint, metallic paint onto, onto that body, so that it will be it will conduct the electricity. When do you get a shock? When the electricity does not conduct from one side to the other immediately. It comes and sits in your body or in the hand. But that is another reason why they, why they put some carbon or something like that in the motor car parts made of plastic. So, this is the color, that is the color without Okay. 
without any flash. But if you take a look at it, when the material is deforming, that deformed polyethylene, it does not look that color. So, the deformation is happening not to the anything else, but this, this part, this deformation is that of the polyethylene. So, whatever color identity you have there, that is not part of the things like that, a small amount, all right. This is very, and then when you have fly ash there, also again you can see that these kinds of, and particularly in this one, with 10 percent weight fly ash, you get so much of deformation, okay, drawing behavior. But 20 percent said, no, I don't have any drawing, okay, so, all right, so it's a brittle failure. And the elastic modulus goes up from about 0.28 or close to 0.3 GPA to when you go for 20 percent fly ash, it goes up to about close to 0.6, to about 100 percent improvement in the elastic modulus. So, what you can see here, this one, although it breaks, but its modulus of elasticity is about double. It also, when you have 5, it goes up. So, if you have up to 20 percent, now what does it make? Modulus of elasticity mean goes up by a factor of 2 man. When you are sitting on this, if there is no timber underneath and if, if you are sitting on a just a soft cushion, your body will bend down. But because there is a timber below, or it is supported with these timbers there, that is why you have a stronger one, stronger thing, that is what that is what minimizes or reduces the deformation. So, if elastic modulus goes higher up, that means the deformability will go down. So, if elastic modulus becomes double, then that means the deform deformation will be half, something like that. So, that makes it useful, okay. And this, this can be a straight line or it can go up like that, because normally if you say R square equals 0.2429, chemists will say, hang on, it is nowhere like a straight line, and I agree with them. But if you forget about the, these three points in between, if you are putting this high HDP and 20 percent fly ash, then it looks like that. But this R square, sometimes it shows that it is not a regular straight line. But this is what I learned from my organic chemistry friends in the defense department where, as I said, I used to work in the organic chemistry division where 99 of them were organic chemists or chemists and I was the only one who was not a chemist. So, I had to teach them fracture mechanics and we had to do experiments and they had to teach me all these things, DS, uh, all these differential thermal calorimetry and all these things. But then I said to them, look, they said anything less than 0.99 bando don't accept it. I said well, it's not all pure chemistry. Engineering is much different than that. So gradually they started accepting even 0.8 or things like that. But here I asked my students to do an analysis anyway to see how it goes. So it shows that the linearity is pretty bad. But the important thing is that value with 20 percent is it shows it is about 100 percent improvement in the elastic modulus. And as you have seen the yield, stre yield stress in the earlier one, yield stress is not going down. Yield stress and tensile stress, there are not much of a difference. In when you are using polypropanyl, this strength goes down with flies, but here at least it remains at the same level with 20 percent, 8 percent fly ash. But Strength does not go down, but the modulus goes up by a factor of 2. So, that is the use, and because it is a recycled polyethylene, so people, and if you are using it, and if it shows that it makes the material much stronger, it will have a very attractive, attractive uh, feature in the market, poly, poly, polyethylene market or recycled plastic market. Any questions so far? Okay. Now, strain to failure, 
normally it always goes down if it become a bit stiff, but still you will find that strain to failure means is 25 percent for high density polyethylene and then as it the concentration goes up with 20 percent it comes down to about 10 percent. Point 0.1 is this 10 percent right. So, the, the strain to failure is still quite good. So, which means even that sample last one 20 percent where it shows that it did not show any show any fibrillation, but at least in that case it indicated that there is about 10 percent thing, but the ultimate failure was as soon as they stretched to 10, 10 percent then it failed, but at least it is much better than brittle failure. What is the strain to failure of any ceramic material it is well less than 1 percent, it can be 0 0.2 percent, 0 0.3 percent something like that. So, when you put the fly ash in the polyethylene is DPE and on, with only 28 percent you are still getting a 10 percent. So, instead of 0.2 for the fly ash itself 10 percent means it is about 50 times the whole thing has become 50 times more ductile compared to the fly ash. Now, the having given this properties calculated then they are putting the stress strain diagram. If you put the stress strain diagram first then sometimes it may be quite confusing, but these are the original stress strain diagram which sorry which the instrument produce instrument machine produced and they were all analyzed and all those graphs and things before which we showed in the past four or five slides they actually are taken from this one. So, this is a bit going back the other way, but that is sometimes depending on where you are making the presentation. It was presented at international composites conferences. So, they are interested in the property, people who come from all the things composites components, they are not interested in stress strain behavior and things like that. So, that is why we present to them the properties, the materials under various uh, flash concentration and show that. If, so, that made it attractive to them and then if some, they go home and say hang on how did they how did the guys they determine these properties and then we said this is the source from which these properties are coming up all right. <coughs> so, sometimes certain features are important to yeah that is 10 millimeter per minute this is one of the standard things like that you can go to strain rate in the instrument it can be now strain rate it is not strain rate it is the displacement rate. If you have to say strain rate then you have to take into 10 divided by the gauge length. So, so this instrument have is it can move at different so you can, you can go even 0.5 millimeter per minute or you can go to 10 millimeter per minute you can go to cross edge speed yes cross edge well you can call it velocity I can call it speed, but if velocity and speed is, is the same direction is speed all right yes, but I have often seen in different like your compression molding and this and this so, so, but it is all the same velocity and speed all right. So, when a car is running if you are running in a straight line its velocity when you are going there it says give the speed limit below 30 mph. Okay, it does not say velocity. So, when is that even in the state line here. So, speed and velocity for these experiments they are the same. Now, the impact strength when you put the fly ash there the impact strength seems to have come down a bit, whereas we showed that in polypropylene the impact strength went up by about 25 30 percent here the impact strength come down, but the positive thing is that high density polyethylene has much higher impact strength than polypropylene. So, even after it comes down by about 50 percent, so 985 to 466 or so it is still 
quite acceptable. And then micro hardness, when you take a look at the micro hardness, micro hardness does not seem to be affected much by up to 5 percent fly ash, but micro hardness gets about double if you have, if you have about 8. And what micro hardness does is a very small shift between here and there, not the whole thing, shift between very small sections. So, some other the 10 percent gives you an indication of the micro hardness. That means, when it is the you are putting the diamond thing, diamond is trying to go there, it is pushing it back. So, it is a, it's not allowing more depth. So, that is why it, it is all right. Micro hardness tends this is in hardness weaker. Okay. <clears throat> now, so far, so we have looked at the mechanical properties of the materials, impact properties of the materials, surface, and then <coughs> this is something which I am not an expert on electrical properties but I have friends in all departments and I happen to meet some electrical engineering academics. One is an Australian guy and another person she, she, she was an she is of Indian origin and then when we talked about this and they and we were discussing that we are doing fly ash in, in polymer composites polyethylene then they said, oh, you are working with fly ash. Can you give us some of your samples? I said, what will you do? We will see, we will look into the electrical properties. I said, yes, of course. So, we gave some of these samples, each, each material. And what they came up with, for the 0 percent fly ash, the log values of electrical conductivity is minus 12, all right. So, it is not linear value, it is log value. So, and then as you keep on increasing the fly ash, the log, the electrical conductivity of this one, somehow there it goes up by little bit. If you increase the, and also there is a frequency involved somewhere, it is not showing there, okay, we will come there. But if you are increasing the electrical conductivity, if you are increasing the flash content, this there is also a frequency, there should be, there is the thing on the top also. So, the electrical conductivity goes up by about minus 12 to minus 6. How many orders of magnitude it has goes goes up by? Yes. Yes, in one in simple term, how much is it? One. One million times. Is it right? Ten to the power six is one million. Correct. Okay. So that's <coughs> a very good improvement. Now. Perhaps I will just fill up another thing, because we have done a lot of work in carbon nanotube. By putting a very small amount of carbon nanotube, like 0.7 or 0.8 or like that, the electrical conductivity, the same thing would, would go up, not by 1 million, by, but by about 100 to 1000 millions. Okay? And sometimes it's close to a, close to 10 to the word 10, so about 10 billion, something like that. So, what it shows as well, carbon nanotube is a conducting material, but because you have small, here this material, this flash has about LOI about 1, so you have small amount 1 percent carbon in it, even that, so when you are putting 20 percent fly ash, you are increasing the carbon content by about 20 times compared to, compared to 
one or something like that, all right? So, that was quite an improved thing. And yes, and this, this side, what it is, is actually this wet person flash is related to that. And, and this is related to frequency. So, I think we'll, I'll see if we, if we have the, any graph related to frequency. Yes, now you can see that also <coughs> it was done as a function of frequency. An electrical engineer, anyone electrical engineer here or a friend of electrical engineer? Whatever they do, whether dielectrics or electrical conductivity, they will always say that you have to find out these things as a function of frequency. So, any electrical engineer researcher, they will say, how does it vary as a function of frequency? And this is how these things show that this number 20 is here. So, this is going on. And log value of frequency and log value of the electrical conductivity, this is how it comes up. Now, one thing <coughs> that electrical engineering professor he told me, and I learned from him, he said it shows that this fly ash polyethylene HDP composites can be used as frequency filter. I have to do some electrical engineering classes to get more knowledge, but that is what he said. And then in 2012 or 11, there was a new, okay, we had a new head of the department in our you know the patent area, New South Wales patent area, when he came in and he said rather than having everything to go through the lawyers and things like that and waste, waste so much of time because lawyers take time and it goes, this, he said that he came from a university in Scotland. Is Glasgow in Scotland? I think he came from University of Glasgow and Scottish people are very smart and very friendly. And what he said, he said, gave all academics notice that if you have your new innovation and things, submit, fill up all those forms and things and send to us and we will put them on I bridge, I for whatever, it is, like email or whatever. So, they will, they put it on I bridge in November, I think 2011 or 12. And I found there were seven I bridge items from the entire state, from the entire University of New South Wales, which has hundreds and hundreds of researchers. And would you believe some of my projects also were on the I bridge? So, out of seven, how much would you like to have in your name? If, if your university says that we'll select and things like that, and you see that. Seven total seven were on the on the entire university list. How many would you like to have? At least one, or more than one. And how many would you expect the university would have done that? Anyway, not wasting your time. I found that three of the seven IPs were from my supervised research items in various in various. So I felt so so happy, and this one was included as one of them. And they showed both the mechanical properties and also the electrical properties. So, I was <coughs> so surprised and so happy and I thank my co-researchers and scholars as I say, I sent all of them to them. And when these were published, I actually also included their name. So, not just my name because they did all the hard work and so they so, there are three, three out of the seven IPs, three were from my supervised projects and this work was one of them. So, now we can have it together scanning electron microscope of the fly ash and recycled HDP tensile fracture. So, 
So this is fly ash, fly ash, and here you put put the fly ash. This is the epoxy, and then once you these are the river lines. Have you remember we have talked about it? This is the deformation, and here you have the fly ash. So the fly ash stops the thing going through the river lines. So this is how the fracture proceeds. And when you have tensile fracture surface for 5 and 20 percent fly ash, for 5, 5 percent you still have a lot of entanglement of this, of the, uh, this chemical bonding or chemical fibrils. But when you go to 20 percent, it's not that much of intensive. So it get, tends to get more brittle. So this and this surface, this surface is com comparatively more flat compared to that. And then, if you like to take a look at the impact fracture, 5 percent on the left and 20 percent on, on, on the right. Okay, so th this shows a bit more brittle, a bit more brittle, but at the same time, because polyethylene is much more ductile than polypropylene, you still have enough amount of impact fracture property. Okay, so you have more fly ash here, so you can actually see lesser, the circular things mean more ductile things, yet you still have to see this interfabulation and things like that, but it goes up by about another 20 percent or so. So, conclusion, fly ash can have a very different makeup. As the amount of fly ash increases, the surface area seems to be random, and then the bonding of the composite seems to get stronger as you put amount of fly ash, and as we have seen, this compared against polypropylene where the strength comes down, yeah, the strength remains just the same almost within 90, 95 to 105 percent of the strength of the high density polyethylene with fly ash addition. All right. So, and modulus with 20 percent fly ash, the modulus is doubled. And here also you can see that the impact toughness remains quite high. It is possible for production in a commercial application, and here. We have not used just virgin polymer. We have we have used this recycled plastics, which recycling companies have given to us. So color is no problem. Those recycling plastic have the same color as a gray black polymer, and with no treatment of special mixing. Sorry, with no treatment of special mixing mixing. The fly ash can be added to the HDP up to 20 watt percent, provide quite good strength. And each watt percent gives different properties depending on the desired application. So, if you do not want more strength, but you want more ductility or things like that, you can use lesser amount of things. So, for different amount of fly ash, you get different advantages. All right. So, thanks very much. And I and this thanks Rick Hetzler's was my colleague from Defense Australia, and he is also a very positive in the Composites Australia materials. And then CRCSCS, NSI is the, is the University of New South Wales patenting body, and they put up this on the eye bridge. This was one of those seven, and one of those three which they took from my group of research on the first eye bridge, put on the inter internet. And then there's the cement Australia Brisbane, and these are my colleagues who are actually from the modeling section of our school. And now Professor Iving, he has moved to Monash University, and he is bringing a lot of China there. But they are I being, this I being even Qinghua Zheng, they are modeling people. All right. So with that, that's the end of this first lecture. Thank you for your questions, all the things, and thank you for your queries, and also thank you for your feedback.